Hey, what's up, folks? How's it going? This is Wadge. Hope you guys are all doing well. Now, for the past 36 hours, I've been benchmarking like a maniac uh, because I got this thing in. This is the RTX 2070 from a Gigabyte. This is the WinForce Edition with the triple fan configuration. Now, this is my first 2000 series RTX GPU from NVIDIA, and I'm really excited. I'm really curious to see how this compares against uh, something like the GTX 1080 because this pretty much retails uh, for what you can get a 1080 for right now. We'll also do a comparison between the previous generation 1070 to give you guys an idea. So we're going to be taking a look at some popular gaming titles at 4K resolution, at obviously full 1080p and ultra wide quad HD because I've been also testing out the 35 inch HDR monitor from a BenQ. So something like an RTX 2070 should be a pretty decent companion uh, to an ultra wide ultra HD uh, monitor like the BenQ. So if you're interested, Let's get right into it and see how this thing compares against the previous gen. Now we're going to be taking a look at the performance of the RTX 2070 WinForce Edition from Gigabyte. This is very similar to the reference card in the fact that it's clocked around 1620 megahertz. As you can see, we have a triple fan configuration, uh, something that Gigabyte is really known for. Now interestingly, the center fan actually spins in the opposite direction compared to the outer fans. And compared to a traditional triple fan design where all fans are spinning at the same direction, there might be some competing kind of air turbulence issues. Gigabyte claims with this alternating design the exhaust direction will be more symbiotic and uh, this will result in better overall heat dissipation. Now in terms of actual temperatures I did run Furmark on this GPU for about 30 minutes and with the stock frequency settings we hovered around the mid 60 degrees Celsius range which is pretty typical for uh, most cards in this kind of range. Now when comparing the specifications directly against the previous generation of Nvidia GPUs you can see that we've thrown in uh, the uh, GTX 1080 and 1070 as well as the uh, 1080 Ti just to give you guys a better perspective on things. Now, when it comes to the total number of CUDA cores, you're going to see that the uh, GTX 1080 Ti and uh, 1080 are uh, a little bit above uh, what the 2070 has to offer. And uh, the core frequencies will fluctuate depending on which card you're getting, whether it's the reference grade or an aftermarket solution, or if you're going to do some overclocking down the road. We're going to basically stick to the stock frequencies on the cards that we'll be testing out. Now, in terms of the amount of video memory, we have 8 gigs uh, on the 2070 like the uh, 1080 and 1070 but it's GDDR6 which is uh, the newest generation we have 11 gigs on the 1080 Ti and it has the biggest uh, memory bus and bandwidth as well but as you can see the RTX 2070 has the fastest memory speed of about uh, 14 gigabits per second compared to 11 10 and 8 on uh, the uh, 1080 Ti 1080 and 1070 respectively now, the first thing I wanted to test was power consumption of uh, the RTX 2070 now we uh, ran all the GPUs uh, through the exact same system. Check out the description for the detailed specs. And what you're looking at is uh, the uh, system uh, power draw of the entire PC when uh, the GPU is being fully taxed via Furmark. So we get about 317 watts on the uh, 2070, which is quite a bit more than uh, the previous generation 1070 at 262 watts and a little bit more efficient than the 1080. And obviously the 1080 Ti is more of a power hungry card and it's getting about 377 watts from the wall. Next, we're gonna be taking a look at uh, TimeSpy, which is everybody's favorite DirectX 12 synthetic benchmark. And we're getting a fairly decent score, about 8843 with our overall score on uh, the uh, 2070, which is a lot better than the 1080 and uh, certainly the 1070. And just uh, slightly behind the uh, GT TX 1080 Ti at around 9,021 points, which is uh, very, very impressive. Now next, let's take a look at uh, some of our real world benchmark results. We've uh, tested out a couple of different games at uh, fairly high detail settings to ultra settings. Now you're gonna be viewing the benchmark results in three different resolutions. We have the full HD standard, a ultra wide quad HD resolution of uh, 3840 by 1440p, since I'm testing out this 35 inch HDR monitor from BenQ, as well as uh, the standard ultra HD standard or 3840 by 2160 p so that way you guys get a good range of different resolutions so without any further ado let's get right into it
Now in most scenarios, you're going to find that the RTX uh, 2070 is faster uh, than the 1080 and much faster than the previous generation 1070. If you're going to compare it to anything, uh, the uh, performance result is very similar, uh, if not just slightly below the GTX uh, 1080 Ti, which is actually a good thing because the 1080 Ti is still going to be priced a little bit higher if you're going to get it new. Uh, on the used market, it's definitely good for some of you guys out there because you can probably get the uh, 1070 and the 1080 for a really good deal right now with the new crop of GPUs uh, coming out. And in uh, for the most part, if you're looking for a new GPU, uh, certainly uh, the 2070 is not uh, the most bang for your dollar out there, but it's certainly not the worst. Definitely love to hear your thoughts. We're going to be doing a couple of uh, different uh, comparisons with the 1070 uh, compared to the uh, Vega lineup of GPUs, specifically the Vega 64. So definitely check out that video. You'll find that in the description or on a card up above. Other than that, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching and we'll see you real soon. Take care.